Hello and welcome to The Pulse. The chief executive, Carrie Lam, and a group of legal and security officials have just come back from meetings in Beijing to discuss the proposed national security legislation with Vice Premier Hang Zhen and other officials. Lam said the central authorities intend to firmly, comprehensively and faithfully implement one country, two systems and resolutely safeguard national security. She said the central government will be listening to opinions from Hong Kong people. That same day, the United Kingdom's Prime Minister Boris Johnson pledged that if China proceeds with the national security law, Britain will change immigration rules for some three million British national overseas passport holders in Hong Kong, granting them a pathway to citizenship. Well, with us to talk about the proposed law is Elsie Lung, former Deputy Director of the Hong Kong Basic Law Committee of the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress of China and, of course, the first um, Justice Secretary of the Hong Kong SAR. Yes, yes, I was. Let me ask you, because there is, as you know, enormous, um, I would say, worry and confusion about the um, resolution that was passed at the National People's Congress. And I know that I can't ask you what the details of the new law are because they're not known. Yes. But, but, you have been involved in this process for a long time, so you, you must have some idea of where we're going. Do you think, for example, we're speaking on June the 5th, mm. do you think that the June 4th commemoration of um, the Tiananmen events in, in um, 1989 would be permitted under this law? Well, uh, in Hong Kong, people have the freedom of the demonstration, freedom of assembly. Mm -hmm. So if the activities or the behavior does not amount to secession, subversion, um, or terrorist activity, which I, I hope that they would not. Well, one of oh, the demands mm, yeah. of, of, the, um, of that particular rally mm -hmm. every year, mm -hmm. as you know, it's been mm -hmm. going on for over 30 years, mm -hmm. has always been at the end of one party rule mm -hmm. in China. Mm -hmm. Would that be considered um, a, 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 an act of um, subversion? Yes. That slogan is on false premises. Even in China, um, it is not one party rule. Um, it is the, the, um, the multi party um, cooperation uh, under really? the. Which other parties are involved in ruling China? Nine. They are nine. <laughs> Which party matters? Hmm? <laughs> really? I mean, really? Yeah. Um, Really? The Communist Party isn't the, isn't the overwhelming... Party. Yeah, that is under the leadership of the Communist Party, mm. but you have cooperation. But look at it, many other mm. countries have the ruling party. Mm. Uh, do, do, do they suggest that that should uh, not happen? Well, the, the, what uh, happens is they change after elections. Uh, yes, they, that doesn't yes. happen in China. Yes, yes, but mm. uh, it doesn't change because it's supported by the people. You ask the people mm. of China whether they want um, to remove the communist, um, the, the, the communist rule in China. They don't. So um, it is clear mm. that Chinese state security bodies would be setting up office, so to speak, in, if, in, nec if, if necessary, yeah. in Hong Kong. Mm. Um, what is your understanding about setting up uh, specific courts to deal with matters arising from this legislation? Uh, again, we have to see what the, um, uh, the, the, the law when promulgated says. Mm. But um, I think under Article um, 19 of the Basic Law, our courts have jurisdiction over matters which previously, uh, before the handover, they have jurisdiction to deal with. So um, uh, unless it's a matter of defense, foreign affairs, or, or state, State acts, Act of yeah. state, yeah. acts of state, state. Yeah. but uh, otherwise um, the, the courts would have jurisdiction over that. But then of course there are other principles, for example, um, uh, immunity of foreign sovereign. I mean these are common law principles. I don't see that the court will, um, it will, will, will be differently operated after the passing of the law. There was a suggestion that judges holding um, foreign nationality of whatever it is should not be allowed to preside over cases involving national security. Mm. Is it still your view that that would be um, inappropriate? Yes. Um, you see the number of foreign judges in Hong Kong, according to what the uh, Chief Justice said uh, before, uh, is a minority. There are about 6% of judges, of our foreign judges in Hong Kong. Secondly, of course we cannot demand foreigners um, to, to, to uh, swear allegiance to the uh, People's Republic of China. But 
if they um, uh, uh, become judges, then upon assuming office, they have to take an oath uh, to um, uphold the basic law and also to uh, swear allegiance to the um, people in the, to the uh, People's Republic of China and the Hong Kong as they are. And that is as interpreted so, as Article 104 interpreted by the Standing Committee. So of you're Policy. saying as long as they make that oath, yes. there is no reason why somebody who holds a foreign yes. passport, let's not necessarily call them foreign judges, yes. would be barred from presiding. Yes, that's my view. But of course, the um, assignment <coughs> of judges to cases, that is, the, uh, that is within the, 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 the power of the uh, judiciary. And they have a very well set up system. Huh? And I, I, I trust that they would find the right person to deal with cases of all kinds. Can I move to another thing? Again, this is um, uh, arising from what you've just mentioned. This is the um, uh, interference of foreign forces mm. in, in, in Hong Kong's affairs. Yeah. Do you think that this will result in the prescribing of a number of organisations from being allowed to operate in Hong Kong, banning of people from entry into the SAR? Well, not unless they are involved in activities or behaviour um, like secession, subversion um, or terrorist activities. Um, and of, of course, um, uh, treason um, and uh, sedition, uh, leakage of state secret, which we already have law to govern. Let's talk about our system. Do you have faith in our system? Do you agree that Hong Kong has the best rule of law and we have judicial independence? Then if you do not trust our system, then I've got nothing to say. Well, I suppose the argument is that our system, the Hong Kong system, is changing. It is not changing. Um, the, um, in the decision, uh, the, the, the concept of one country, two system, uh, was emphasized. And also there's emphasized that it would not um, interfere with, the, it would not injure, harm or injure people's rights and freedoms. As matters stand, mm -hmm. the president of LegCo has said that legislators cannot even discuss this law. Do you think that's right? According to an answer given by LegCo uh, some years ago, uh, the mm -hmm. Constitutional and Mainland Affairs um, uh, secre Secretary for um, Constitutional and Mainland Affairs um, uh, uh, the, the Bureau, um, he did say that in important matters, um, the government will consult Legislative Council. Uh, if the law is to be enacted. And I think when Carrie Lam came back from Beijing, she did say that um, uh, there will be consultation on the drafting of the law. But no discussion in LegCo itself? It doesn't exclude it. Well, the, the president of LegCo appears to have, have, have done that. No, I, I don't think that is the right, in the right context. Mm. Uh. But let me oh, ask of course, it cannot, it, it cannot uh, discuss the law or debate over it as if it were a piece of legislation in Hong Kong. But certainly, uh, people can um, express the, the legislative councillor can express the bill when consulted. Tam Yu Chung, who, uh, uh, as we know, is the, uh, I suppose you could say, Hong Kong senior representative within the National People's Congress as a member of the Standing Committee, has said that if legislators are opposed to this law, they should be disqualified, or oh, not legislators, if anybody is mm. opposed to this law, they should be disqualified from standing for election. Is that a good idea? Well, you have freedom of speech in Hong Kong. I mean, you can... No, I'm asking your opinion, not Tammy Jones' opinion. opinion. My opinion <laughs> is that anybody standing for election of LegCo mm. must comply with the uh, requirement. Uh, set out in the basic law and also uh, because uh, as a candidate he will have to accept that he will swear allegiance to the National People's Congress and the Hong Kong SAR, uh, the, the, the um, People's Republic of China and the um, Hong Kong SAR and also to uphold the basic law. Well I think in that mm -hmm. um, oath taking the crucial part is the allegiance to Hong Kong, mm -hmm. the Hong Kong SAR and mm -hmm. the PRC. Mm -hmm. I don't think we've heard before mm. that, that somebody to qualify for standing for election mm. has to agree with all the um, components of the basic law. That seems to be something yep, new. To uphold it. Well, you have to uphold the basic law. So if you disagree with it, even if you disagree with it, you have to uphold it. Can you understand why people are uneasy about the passing of this um, resolution in the MPC? And ju ju just to say, and, and that they're uneasy because they say this simply means that there will be a more mainland style 
of implementation of the law within Hong Kong? No, I think their concerns are unfounded because if you trust Hong Kong's system, if you trust that any law cannot violate the basic law, violate the human rights provision of the basic law, um, then you have nothing to fear about. If you do not involve in the, uh, the, the activities and behavior which would endanger national security, the law is aimed at um, <coughs> uh, stopping, preventing or punishing a small number of people who are involved in these activities. We have a very robust legal, uh, judicial, legal system and uh, uh, this robust rule of law and also we have faith in judicial independence in Hong Kong. Well, that's mm. very reassuring, Elsie Lung. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, we'll be back after the break. We'll see you then. Welcome back. It's 31 years since the June 4th crackdown in Tiananmen Square, but at least in Hong Kong, memories remain sharp. The annual vigil in Victoria Park to commemorate the deaths in 1989 is often seen as a barometer of Hong Kong's freedoms. The future of that vigil is now in question. This year, social distancing regulations were given as a reason for banning the event. But the pending national security legislation may well lead to a longer-term ban. This year, for the first time in its 30-year history, the annual June 4 vigil in Victoria Park was banned. Citing potential threats to public health in the face of the COVID-19 pandemic, the police issued a letter of objection against it going ahead. The vigil organizers, though, remained determined the events of June 4, 1989 would be commemorated. Lee Chuck Yen also invited the public to light up candles at their homes or neighborhoods to make the commemoration citywide. Lee believes the mainland's approval of the national security law for Hong Kong ushers in a new era, one in which people will be constantly fearful of breaching the legislation. As a result, they'll limit their own freedoms. The biggest threat of the law is that we do not know how they define subversion, collusion with foreign power or uh, incitement. When they target a certain organization, they can also target others. And the, the always there is a moving goal on their part. Political need is overwhelming consideration. If they want to have a political action taken on any group in Hong Kong, any civil society, they will take it. So I think no one can be optimistic that they will not abuse the law. That I think would, would not happen. And if the law is in, then they have the power, they have the tool, and they always, a Communist Party, they want to use it to suppress. Staff members at the park continuously patrolled the football pitches. Yet, this didn't stop the alliance from entering the fenced-off areas. The crowds grew and at some point, people took up spaces across all six football pitches.
法會富益愛草喺公園嘅自由噶。我問香港政府點解掌曬啲草？我哋咁多年啦，六四集會我哋未有破壞過噶，我哋好乖噶。點解咁多差人喺度啊？維園嘅球場連結埋全香港九龍新界，其實人心所向，係仍然大家都睇到嘅。所以我哋覺得今年就算你警方出話一個禁制嘅集會，最後人心不死嘅話，燭光係一樣不滅。As the chairman of the Hong Kong Federation of Students in 1989, he witnessed the Tiananmen Square crackdown firsthand. He considers it a personal duty to mourn the dead. If we continue to say the truth, continue to ask the Chinese Communist Party is a crime, then we will have to face this kind of result. So, no matter how the Chinese government is doing, I will continue to use my own way to honor the dead and the truth to continue to be true. Thank you. 誒改變到社會嘅一啲問題啊，咁所以當時見到中國一個咁大嘅民主運動咧，就去咗北京，係去支援北京學生咯。六月三號晚，我整個晚上都係留喺廣場嘅，而當時我就喺廣場紀念碑嘅最頂層，同北京同學一齊。北京嘅民眾同埋學生咧，即係誒用佢嘅生命保護我，係誒。要我安全咁樣離開翻到香港咧，係講翻將真相係講翻出嚟。咁誒呢一個嘅祝福，其實喺呢三十一年嚟一路都係提醒緊我。所以每一年即係誒，無論任何時候，即係當我需要去為誒八九民運同埋六四屠城去做一個見證嘅時候，我都一定會將我當時見到嘅真相係講翻出嚟。Having survived the crackdown. Kenneth has become a local human rights lawyer fighting for minority rights. He considers his work an extension of the spirit that drove the Tiananmen protest movement. As an outspoken member of his profession, Kenneth ran and won the Law Society Council election last week. Together with his fellow elected representatives, he intends to take a firm stance on the importance of rule of law. 赞成两千八百七十八票，反对一票，弃权六票。宣读完毕。通过。我哋见到近年香港面对咗比较大嘅一个冲击，就系即系诶，我哋嗰个法治制度啦。我呢一代人其实亲身经历中英联合声明嘅谈判，亲身经历基本法嘅草拟。亦都親身經歷當年中國對香港嘅承諾，所謂除咗國防外交之外，香港可以高度自治。呢一個承諾咧，好明顯就係不再實踐啦。所以去到呢一步，其實即係我哋走到中年，覺得係好好難過，即係見見到咁樣嘅發展係，亦都好無奈。喺八九年或者過去嘅反修例裏面，我哋見到好多好身邊好平凡誒嘅人咧，佢哋為咗一個更大嘅目標，無論係舊年即係為咗保護香港嘅制度，還是當年八九年希望去爭取民主同自由，而佢哋係去犧牲咗自己。雖然個結果我哋見到八九年之後，中國係更加嘅政治係更加監控更加強。反修例之後，我哋見到而家香港亦都唔見到有更加即係咩出路。但係我哋會記得喺呢啲日子裏面咧，呢呢一啲人嘅付出，而我我時刻都
會會記起呢一啲誒咁樣嘅每一個人，我接觸嘅人，其實佢哋都係誒、嗯，都俾我哋提醒我哋，其實人性光輝嘅一面，其實好美麗。亦都係呢一面咧，令到我哋見到，無論係八九年或者反修例運動，咁多人係被感動同埋牽動。而去關注、去支持整個運動，我相信嚟緊唔會係容易嘅。誒、呃，無論係政權嘅打壓或者係監控，呃、但係我相信我哋係會揾到香港人嘅方式去繼續去悼念、去堅持真相同埋去抗爭。